Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is Crystal One on One, and it's nice to have you here for our conversations. Now we happen to be at La Casita, a lovely spot in Nagru, along in Tindatu Road. There's so many areas of greenery and color, and my guest today is very colorful. I have to say, I'm so <laughs> excited to have her. She is a business coach. She owns a number of businesses. She will tell us all about that. She's a content creator, and many of you know her from the show The Unpopular Opinion. Be your own boss, babe, right? Oh, I yeah. have Claire and <laughs> Nancy Combi on the show today. Hi, Crystal. Hi. How are you? I'm good. You're Thank you so to much make for me having blush earlier. You, 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 you. you. <laughs> oh, it's such an honor being here. It really, really is. Like, it's been such a dream for me. I've been listening to you since I was little and you have interviewed the most amazing people on here and I get to be one of those amazing people. Yes, I'm amazing. But yes, I get to are. be one of those people. <laughs> it's so validating. It really, really is a well, validating you. to be interviewed by you. Oh, it really thank is. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I have me. been following your journey and you know, enjoying your content. I love that you are completely comfortable in your own skin and there's a bravery to you that I always pick up mm -hmm. and I think that, oh my gosh, you know, we're always talking about, you know, as women being comfortable in our own skin, you know, to be who we are, yeah. speak our mind, all of that. Have you always been that person? I have. Then yes. I haven't. Then I have. So, so I, I was very confident growing up. I was, I was, it was almost like I was born confident. Mm -hmm. um, but I also had very affirming parents. Both my oh. parents were very affirming. Um, and the fam my family also very confident. Mm. Um, uh, we grew up in spaces where women were, you know, we, most of my family, especially my mother's side, were matriarch. Mm -hmm. You know, the women are very powerful and things like that. So yes. I had no choice but to be confident, but also naturally, mm -hmm. my natural um, mm -hmm. things, to be confident. Yeah. Even when I'm not confident, by the way, you should never know. You will never know. <laughs> it's almost like a, it's almost like an armor. Mm -hmm. My confidence it's is like an armor. It's like a defense armor. mechanism, exactly, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I hated bullies. Yeah. Um, growing up, so conf if you're confident with a bully, mm -hmm. you, they will not bully you. That's the whole yeah. point, right? They're so cowards I, at the exact, end of the day. Exactly. So growing up, because I had, I used, I sucked my fingers. Mm -hmm. Still do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In my own, we said, I had to be damn bit. Like, uh, when I'm really hungry or really <laughs> sad. Or oh, bless. Yeah, there's, there's that bit of a softness to me mm -hmm. that most people don't see. But when I was young, I used to suck my fingers. Mm -hmm. And people would tease me because I had big lips, mm -hmm. ki kids at school, um, boys. And I, I had to learn how to mm -hmm. stand up for them. I would, a boy would say something really mean about my lips. And I'd stand up and say something right back, but I would feel the thing that he had said to me, yes. but I would never let him. But you would you never show exactly. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And people tell me I walk so confidently. It's because you all are looking at me. <laughs> I feel, I'm like, oh my God, all these eyes are on me. And so I, I stand up tall and I'm like, no one will ever see me, you know? Mm -hmm. So even in the times when I'm not confident, I, you will see think I am confident mm. because it's a protection. Yeah. Um, con I feel like confident women have been stepped on to it will not be me. Mm -hmm. It shall not be me. Not <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I love that. Um, but then I lost my confidence a little bit when I got my the first time I got married. Mm. I've been married twice. Mm. Um, and it's just life happened. You know when you're in your twenties, life happens and everyone's trying to make you a good wife. And in order to be a good wife you cannot be you know, you need to respect. You can't do this. You and can't uh -huh, do that. Exactly. You be like this. Mm -hmm. So I kind of conformed oh. into that that version of a wife. So you have to dim your light. That is n exactly, exactly, um, and it is bright. It is supposed to be bright, mm. but I really, really had to dim it down in order to be a good wife in that particular at marriage that mm -hmm. at that time. And so I lost all my confidence. And coming out of it, everyone who saw me after it was like, Claire, we we, we couldn't recognize you anymore you know and then i got when i got out of it i went i did the work mm. to get confident again it mm. takes time and yeah. it takes a lot of work intentionality it takes a lot of you just being like okay let me just do it you know how you just jump off the cliff <laughs> and you'll be like okay if i fall I, if i die i die exactly and then you don't die and the then you get a little bit more is that you're like exactly. let me just exactly yeah see what Ex happens exactly yeah so you do something that is big and bold that everyone else get fears that you fear as well mm -hmm. But you do it and then you realize you don't die. You didn't die. And, and you can do it again. Exactly. And then you start saying no to people and then you realize they won't die. You won't die. And then you just 
keep <laughs> doing it and keep doing it until you are extremely confident. Yeah, yeah the power yeah. of no. It's, right? it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's such a wonderful us. word. Yes. Yeah. Sentence. I know. Sentence. <laughs> and yet, I feel as, let's say, as Ugandans, we struggle with we the really no. Do. We really we'll do. say yes. We Meanwhile, really you're like, do. I have no idea how I'm going to do this, do this. thing. Exactly. And then we disappoint everyone and no one is doing anything because mm -hmm. no one can say no, yeah. you know, and yet it's easier to say no. They'll get, they might get upset for that moment, mm -hmm. but then you just avoid a whole, you know, yeah. discomfort, uncomfortable. I like what you said. You end up disappointing people exactly. and you end up letting yourself down. Exactly. You're chipping away at your own integrity. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And when you say no, people are like, mm, that chick has kajanja. It's okay. <laughs> It's fine. I'd rather have kajanja than be a disappointment. True. You know, and mm -hmm. for me, I just, that's how I think, think about it. Um, so you said when you were younger that you were drawn to the spotlight. And I feel that we have gifted children who naturally are drawn to the spotlight because that's who they're supposed to be. Yeah. But our society sometimes struggles with that. Sometimes it's parents, sometimes it's family. My dad wanted me to go to Nollywood to learn acting. Aww. That's how me. That's My how dad is like, we went to law was. school. Uh -huh. We went to law school, first year of uni. Um, in India, and we, when my dad is like, but what are you doing? Law is not your thing. My dad doesn't want us to do How law. How did you end up all the way <laughs> in India? And that's when he's like, what are you I, doing? That, that, that's, no, that, no. so my, 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 my mom and dad. And not together. No, they were. They are together, oh. very happily married. It's just that my mom was a li little bit more, my dad would pay, and then my mom would make, make more of the, the decisions, decisions. Mm. you know? Um, but my dad didn't want us to go to my mom didn't want us to go to Nollywood, obviously. Yes. She's yes. like, no way. Okay. She's like, no way. So your way. mom, would you say she is a little bit more... She's a bit more conservative than my dad, okay. for sure. She okay. was a bit, but she, my mom's amazing. She supports everything mm -hmm. that you do. It's just at that time, I think she may, may have felt that we were too young for yeah. that kind of spotlight. Mm. Um, and my dad is like, no, this one's supposed to go again. Because mm. you, you know, know, did a bit of TV, right? I, di I, I did. For when I was a teenager at Teens uh -huh. Club yeah. for a year. And my mom is like, no. After a year, we convinced her. Okay, you so and your sister? So we got the job first. Yes, my sister and I. Uh -huh. My sister, Zerida, Epicurious Diaries. She's also a content creator. Yes. Um, and she has her own show, actually. So my, I, it, always my, the plans were mine. Always. So one holiday one time, and we're, I always watch the Teens Club kids, and I envied them so much. Mm -hmm. But I'm one, one person, if I envy something, I, I, I realize I want to do it, and I do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I write a CV the way that we were taught in school, mm -hmm. from a paper, and I put it in an envelope. My dad came home, I asked him for an envelope. So we wrote one for myself and one for my <laughs> sister. So when my parents were aware at that time, they never used to allow us to take tra public transport. Yeah. But we were old enough. When S2, S1, S2. So we get onto a, a taxi and go to WBS. Mm -hmm. And we hand in our <laughs> CVs. Our CVs. <laughs> a few months, actually, that holiday passed. The next, a few months later, they call us in for screen testing. Mm -hmm. And then a little while later, I don't remember exactly how long it was between the time we, we, we um, applied and the time we got the job, but they, got to, they gave us the jobs. Okay. Now the task was to tell my parents, <laughs> because we did all of this without their knowledge. <laughs> We went for the we went to apply and went for the interviews we and then we find the way testing. like okay you know we sent our CVs <laughs> no. but we don't know what will happen we like when it when we reach we'll deal with every problem as it comes <laughs> you are the people. that's always me. that's always how I've been I have no clue how I'm going to do this but I do it anyway I start it <laughs> that's me and when it fails it fails if it works it works <laughs> but that's how it's always been me so uh -huh. we go and we give up we put our CVs there and stuff we get the jobs. Now the task was to make sure to tell my mom because obviously she's going to find out. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad was lo was excited. My mom not so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but and my mom, if my mom would be the one to drop us and stuff like that, they knew we had church activities on Saturday morning, mm -hmm. so there was a whole thing. We convinced her, we begged, and we get we proposed, we mm -hmm. made proposal. <laughs> By we, I said me. Mm -hmm. I. Every way finally, possible to every get her on way the I same said we page. will take ourselves, we will be good, we will do ABC. Everything she brought, I had a counter mm. offer. Uh -huh. She allowed. So she said, okay, let's first do the trial, because they gave us probation for a six, for six months. Mm -hmm. And this, let's see those ones. I think she hoped that after six months probation, we'll either have gotten over it, mm -hmm. and the, the, or that they, would, they won't take you on yes, longer. Mm -hmm. long enough. Uh, Bambi, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they gave us the jobs, but then she convinced us not, not to do it after mm. that. But she, it, it scratched an itch for us. 
okay. you know, because it had so got you did that for like a year. Um, uh, we did it for six months. Okay, for the six, six months, months mm -hmm. yes. And then she, yeah, she she convinced us, but also we had got to see how hectic it was. Mm -hmm. You know, the show started at 10, but you had to be there at 8. But we had to promise my mom would be doing church things, would be in church things, you oh. know. So it was very hectic. Um, and then, you, you know, it wasn't just going and smiling on the camera. You yeah. had to do research yes. and whatnot. TV and is a lot Yeah, it was work. work. <laughs> it was work. And then afterwards, you'd, you'd remain behind and stuff like that. All the stuff that wasn't fun. We mm. were kids. All right. <laughs> so law school. All right. Short-lived. Very short-lived. Were short -lived. you convinced? Did you believe that it was also the path for you? No. You went all the way to India? Yeah. Um, well, we I love our did. parents. <laughs> we really love our parents. Uh, my mom is in the legal, okay. um, you know, in mm -hmm. world. Um, so it was just fit. Yeah. We're not going to be, my dad's an engineer. We were definitely not going to be engineers. <laughs> At least so it me. felt like was so the it just felt like the most natural, natural thing to do. Mm -hmm. And every, because I w always wanted to be a child psychologist. Oh. Um, I wanted to help children because I was disle I'm dyslexic and I had issues at school. I was a terrible student. Mm -hmm. Obviously, my teachers made it a point to let me know that I was a terrible student. Mm -hmm. But I knew I wasn't, I w I knew I wasn't dumb. Yeah. I knew I was brilliant. I had a brilliant mind on my head, um, mm -hmm. in my head. And I knew it. It's just that the teachers didn't see it because mm -hmm. I, didn't, I could not read properly. Yeah. Or, I you think know. a lot of the teachers back then just didn't have the training. Exactly. They, didn't, they couldn't recognize. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was, and I was not, never interested in sciences. It was just a whole la bunch of mambo jumbo gibberish mm -hmm. that I never, ever understood. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents empowered us to do what we can, the best we can at what we can. Me, I, I was the best at MDD. <laughs> best. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with sports and stuff, I was possible? really good at those things. Uh -huh. I loved literature, but the pro my problem is the reading. Mm -hmm. I loved literature because of so how dramatic it was. Uh, for you, it's not numbers, it's It's uh, both, words. actually. Numbers. I have both dyscalculia yeah. and dyslexia. Okay. So even in maths, like maths, I tell for it to write, it's worse, because at least now I can read core. Mm -hmm. Maths. Math was a problem, a big, big problem. So my parents, my, my dad, I remember my dad sitting me down and saying, Claire, I understand um, that you can, you, you're a very brilliant girl. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want you to learn how to push yourself and focus on the things you want. You want what kind of life you want for yourself. You're not going to be a doctor, are you? No. Engineer, no. Anything that needs sciences, every day, I used to take baskets of nines. I never tried, never, ever tried. When I get up and read for physics or maths mm -hmm. or whatever, I didn't because I knew I, d I had all the math I needed. One plus one, 1,000 shillings, <laughs> plus 50,000 shillings, 50, that's all I needed. Uh, X, find X, I did not <laughs> need it. <laughs> and I knew it at a very young time. So when I, when no, I, but I really your wanted, dad, because I that think was my dad, that, is, for that sure. is the encouragement most children need, yes. especially because children learn differently. Yeah. Not everyone is going to learn the yeah. same way. Yeah. And to have that person say yes. You're brilliant in your own way. Yes. We all need that. Uh, my dad was an amazing He was an amazing man. He was really, really good. Mm. Traditional in many ways, but also very woke, mm. you know, and very feminist. He didn't know he was a feminist, but he definitely <laughs> was, considering the women he raised. Mm -hmm. um, so my that's why I wanted to be a, a psych child. Psych, psych, t actually I actually wanted to be a teacher. Ah. And I knew I wanted to be a teacher from a very young age because my, I hated my teacher. Okay. I hated my teacher because of the way she treated me, and because I, but I loved my very first teacher, and I wanted to be like her. Mm. So I've always I always wanted to be a teacher. Um, but every time you say I want to be a teacher, everyone's like, "You go to school for eighteen years, and you <laughs> just decide to be a teacher." So <laughs> I kind of exactly. To. I I didn't know it then, mm. but I f listened to what people the judgments other people yeah. made. I was too young to make to stand on my feet at that time. Um, so when we got into law school. It wasn't, uh, yay, it was just like, okay, we could get a fin degree and finish. Even not, if not even my mom wanted, was dying for us to do law. It's just, we it got can, it. It just kind of yeah, happened. Yeah, ca it just kind of happened. So we go to um, India and, yeah, my, my, so I so love we, you and my your sister, sister and I were always in the same class. Always. Okay. Say we're a year apart. Uh -huh. But when, when we're going to, when I was going to P5, and she was going to P4. I said, no, I'm not going to P5. I want to be in my sister's class. 
Okay. So, yeah, I refuse to go ahead. Like, no, you're not twins. <laughs> no, we're not twins. <laughs> we're not twins, but I refuse to go ahead. So okay. we've kind of, we, that's the best decision I have ever made in my life mm. because we became such good friends, mm -hmm. best friends till now. Yeah. You know, the same circles. We've done the same things. If she's also a teacher as well. Mm -hmm. We did law together. Everything in life we've seen together. <laughs> So it was just the best decision, best as decision I've ever made. Anyway, so a year into law school, a year into law school, you said your, dad, year? One your dad was like, uh -huh. one same. No, no, no. Um, we were like, no, we're not going back. We didn't tell our parents. We, so we, our parents paid for us to come back home for the holidays in December. Yeah. That first year. We didn't even make a year. Um, and then on our way back, we decided we're not on our, on our way to the airport, like from our apartment to the airport, mm -hmm. we decided we're not coming back to India. One day? Yeah. <laughs> My sister and I were like, okay, this was fun and all, but we're done. We're not, we don't see ourselves here for another three, four years. Okay. You know? So, so that chapter, Yeah, that cha Yeah, we, we, so we decided we're not telling our parents, though. We didn't tell our parents because we knew they were going to ruin our December holiday. <laughs> So again, we're going to find again, tell them we later. Will face that when we <laughs> when get, we get there, there we'll right now, bridge. you know how when you've just le just gone abroad and you're in uni and you're coming back home, you've mm. bought all your clothes, you've been buying them, <laughs> Pola, Pola. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that was we were the summers now. <laughs> we had been seeing summers <laughs> come and go since we were in S four because some of our friends were international schools and you know they'd go <laughs> and come back for summer. They you know they had fit, whatever, and now we were we get to mm. be the summers mm. from India. We get to be the summer, so we'd be buying our little clothes. You know, every time they'd buy, they'd send us money, we'd go to the mall to collect the money, we'd buy, pass by the shops, mm -hmm. buy some clothes for that's for December, that's for December <laughs> when we go home. <laughs> so we were not going to let our parents mm -hmm. ruin our summer, uh -huh. our first summer at home. Mm -hmm. No way. So we didn't tell them. We didn't tell them. They found out eventually. They were mad, of course. Um, <laughs> Had you left mad. everything, wrapped up everything? Uh, we left a lot of our things. This is really great. Our move on game is strong. <laughs> I'm just like, just like that. You're like, we're not going back. No, we were on the way to the airport because we hadn't even prepared. Because I remember I left my diary. Fortunately, I had a cousin who had come to India that time. Mm. So uh, we had left our things with our a friend. Okay. Uh, but we were planning on coming back. Mm -hmm. So we left a lot of our inf private things yeah. there. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, uh, a cousin of ours went to India that same year, so she got our things. Okay. So four years later, she came home and okay. she gave them to us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, bless. Yeah. So yeah, we came back, we, we felt the heat, so we enjoyed the summer holiday. So that conversation yeah. of we are not going back. Okay, so they found out before we told them. So we were supposed to go back on this by the second, we had exams on the second of January. <laughs> we had exams mm -hmm. on the 2nd of January and our school called that we were not in class. We're not we were not supposed to be on holiday. We were not supposed to be. We hadn't given them this information. So our school called my dad. My dad tell, reported us to my mom because my dad would always just report to my mom. Uh -huh. But he was so furious. He was like, how can you not tell us? You have exams. You know how important your education is, this particular part of education and all that. They were upset and I get it now. Mm -hmm. I get it. You know, they had paid school fees. We hadn't yes. even done the exams. Mm. You know, we had pay, done only one thing. We hadn't paid done the second. Anyway, so yeah, that's how they found out. And then my dad is like, you're going on a plane right now. I'm booking, rebooking you tomorrow. We were like, no. But fortunately, we could say no to our parents. We had that, that um, relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, we could, eh? but uh, pola and pola, not, not just. We it sounds like, like you're just like what? It was negotiation. Mm. Yeah, we were, we're not, not going, going anywhere. Back. We were not going back. That one we had decided we are not going back. But obviously, if they had really pushed, we would have. Yeah. <laughs> if they had really pushed. So what I did now, I decided we let's go somewhere else another to another country because they just needed us out when we're in uganda we just partied so mm -hmm. we were like okay and they said you have until the end of february to get out of our house if you're not out by end of february you're going back to india that's it so okay fair negotiation i get on the internet and i look for school that were uh, what that were taking people fortunately south africa mm -hmm. south africa joy it, um uh, people can join until january mm -hmm. um, and then again in april okay. so that's that then we went to do that's how i found montessori teaching mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i looked on the internet i had no idea what it was but i was like it is there <laughs> it is available they can take us mm -hmm. that's how we got in 
So both of you did Montessori? Yes. Oh my goodness, <laughs> we really did everything together. We really did. We wow. really did. No, Montessori style of it for kindergarten or education it's is the just, best. Isn't it amazing? It, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I just, I, it, what makes me sad is that most people don't understand it. Yeah. It's a buzzword these days. True. My child is in Montessori. I keep saying Montessori, Montessori. Mm. I'm like, I have no. It's exactly. not the easiest it's thing. Exa it's not. It's mm -hmm. not. And even when I started a school, because I couldn't afford to do a full Montessori school, I didn't call it Montessori. Yeah. Because I'm so, I'm, I'm so. <laughs> I don't want to be those Montessorians. You know. Yeah. I am Montessorian <laughs> at heart. The moment I found out what it was, I fell in love with it. Yeah. I'm like, this is what I needed mm -hmm. when I was a child and dyslexic. It's like what learning through play, learning exactly. at the child exactly. pace. Exactly. It's. It's not about numbers and reading. It's about developing the whole child, the yes. child as a whole. Numbers, and in my opinion, numbers and reading are the least important thing. Mm -hmm. Least, who has ever failed to learn how to read? <laughs> I can decide points. I want to learn how to read Mandarin. Yes, it will be a challenge, but I will learn. True. As I an mean, adult. the people who learn how to read and write at what? Exactly. 50. Exactly. Numbers, even the most illiterate person can count their money. That's mm -hmm. all they need. But people have failed to be kind. People have failed at compassion, confidence. Mm. The confidence to start something anew. I wanted to be on TV since I was a child. Yeah. But no one was giving me a job on TV, so I created my own channel. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And that confidence that most of us don't have, I didn't have it either, mm. you know, at some point. But I, I had to develop it. Fortunately, I had a very good um, preschool as well, yeah. um, foundation as well. But that foundation is exactly what will get you to. So uh, often, as Ugandans, we, we dismiss preschool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet it's the most important part. It really is. It is the I most important part. I mean, even when you talk part. about, they say, they used to say the first five years, but now we know it's the first seven years exactly. of a child's development. Exactly. I mean, and it's uh, even about the people in their life, you know, exactly. whoever the is a caregiver, the environment, learning how to be social, all these things determine a lot about the person you become. You're going to become, exactly. Yeah. So I also maybe think maybe that's where my confidence came because I had, mm -hmm. you know, you have the confidence to try new things. You yeah. have problem solving abilities. I'm a business coach and maybe many people come and ask me, Claire, what business could I start? And I'm like, what problem do you want to solve? Mm -hmm. That is a much better question to answer. Once you solve a problem, you have a profitable business. Yeah. You know, most of us have do not have profitable businesses because we start businesses. Yeah. We don't solve problems. <laughs> yes. You get. Mm -hmm. So I so if you're solving my problem, I will give you my money. Yes. A hundred percent. How much you give you money charging? because you're just doing your exactly. things. Exactly. So we think people should just buy our clothes. Yeah. Because you they're know, my because friends they're and they should support uh -huh. me. But they're not uh, they're not solving my problem. So why do you want me to give you my hard earned money mm. just just cause? Mm. Just because you have a business. And that's what's making a lot of our businesses fail. Uganda is the most entrepreneurial country mm -hmm. in the world. But we are still one, one of the poorest. Yes, but most Why? businesses fail within, what, the first year? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we start businesses, we don't solve problems. Mm. You know? Um, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Montessori in South Africa. Yeah. How long was that? Uh, three years. Okay. Three years. And uh, did you start practicing? I did. I working started there? Here? Yes. So I did. And most people think I just flew and became the own boss babe. <laughs> no, yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> flew into this role. No, I started from, I really started from mm -hmm. the bottom. For as much as my parents were amazing, they, they uh, did, you know, be like, when you're not here, you're not here. Yeah. Like, figure it out. Mm. Um, so we, I, I had to figure out how to, because whenever you'd call mommy, my, my mom uh, for extra money, she'd first complain for you for like <laughs> 10 minutes on the <laughs> phone. Like, she'd send it to you eventually. Should obviously send it, but it first she'll first give you like an me. earful. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You can even put the phone down and just wait, and you know exactly. You can predict it mm. every single time because she's sending you money on the first. It needs to last. Until yes, why year. can't you manage your exactly. money? You need to plan. You need to budget. There you go. Oh God. Um, and we'd finish it in a week. Then you'd have to call again. Yeah. Because we were learning, um, but she'd send it again, obviously. But sh sh after the complaining, I got so tired of the complaining. Yeah. So I decided to get my own gig. So when I was in studying, I was doing au pairing. Au pairing is a glorified mm. main nanny. Yes, yes, you are glorified nanny. nanny. Um, so I'd, after school, I'd go to a uh, home, a family home. I'd take care of the kids and because they had a nanny who'd leave. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then I'd take care of the kids from about 4 o'clock to about 7, seven o'clock and then go home. Yeah. So that's where I'd go get my extra money um, after what, uh, after the, I'd get my f money on the first, and after a week it will get finished. I call my mom. After that, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be on my <laughs> own. 
<laughs> is that like the first time you really started working? Would yes. you say making your own money? Yes. Okay. It really mm. was. Um, mm. I hated. I hated having to squeeze myself into a little budget. Mm. Um, my dad was well, very well off. So when we were growing up, we didn't have much of a budget. So that's the life I was used to. This was new. Um, this and was new. You did new. say you're allergic to poverty. Yeah, uh, very, very much. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't and know suffering. that was. I, I, I yes, I'll come back to that. <laughs> So it was, I, I just decided I, do not, I don't want to feel broke. Yeah. So I did, I did um, na au pairing, mm -hmm. um, which is glorified nanny. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when you finished, you were done. Did you come right back? No. I stayed there for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. I worked. Where in South Africa were you? Uh, Cape Town. Okay. Cape okay. Town. Still my favorite place oh, in the entire world. I think it's the world. most beautiful place in the world. Most beautiful place. If you are debating on whether to take a trip to Cape Town, kindly do the most beautiful place and I felt so privileged that I got I got to mm. live there for mm. a few mm. years um, and then I worked there for two and a half years mm -hmm. and then I just decided no I didn't just decide there was a bit of a racism I was working in a white school and I'm a black person you started to feel it it was you you know it was very uh, because I'm from a black country I'm a majority a majority at that time there were no white people when that's they were the thing up. I feel like you know many times it just flies over your head exactly. if we are you know, you're blessed to li grow up like in we Uganda we didn't even feel it it's we so subtle then it. you yes. start to see it later I don't know if it was there because the mission they were missionaries we only see them at church once on Sunday you do you know when I was growing up yes, there were never yes, white yes, people you'd yes. see them at church mm -hmm. on Sunday mm -hmm. two couples maybe mm -hmm. at most no kids nothing and they were so so nice yeah mm -hmm. you know if they had back-ended racism were too young to know yeah. at that time so mm -hmm. when I, it was a cultural shock when I went to SA and I realized oh my god I'm black I actually realized I was black <laughs> for the first time <laughs> I didn't I, I knew it but it it was kind of a, at the back of my mind yeah mm -hmm. they're black people white people then I felt what it meant to be black Mm -hmm. when I went to SA. So I get a job in a... But remember, I'm also not black South African. Yes. I'm black yep. Ugandan. Yes. Black you know? African. Exactly, black African. Because they don't really exactly. think they're exactly. African, Exactly, they right? don't. They really don't. <laughs> <laughs> they think they're different from us. Mm -hmm. I, I was no, so surprised that, that exactly the Africa as South Africans. Exactly. So I got a job. I get a job um, as, a, as a, an assistant teacher in a white school, predominantly white. There were only two black kids, and the two black kids were adopted by white kids. Wow. White, white. Well, there, was a black, there was a black woman, but her husband was white. Okay. So I was the, on, I was the only black teacher in the school. There were the two other two blacks were, one was a, also an assistant. Actually, no, I'm, I wasn't the black, there were two. Mm -hmm. were both assistants. Okay. The, she, the other lady was much older than me, much older. She was old enough to be my mom, actually. She was much older than my mom at mm -hmm. that time. And then I, I just kept thinking that maybe because she has no education or, you know, because most black South Africans at, th at that age did not really have. Stuff. So that's what I thought in my head. Mm. So then um, after, the two year, after the two years, I, uh, after two years, I applied to be my, the lady that was the class teacher in my class was leaving. Mm. So the, her position was open. So you applied for Naturally, position. I applied for it, yes. you know. Uh, I applied for it. You think that I've been in the class for two years. I know the class very well. Everyone loves me. You know exactly you what know to do. Exactly. I loved the school. I loved it. I had never seen the racism in the school. Everyone loved everyone. Mm -hmm. It was just a beautiful place to, to, to work. And then they were like, okay, you apply. I was like, okay, I'll apply. Right, that's fair enough. Um, this is what white people do. That's what I thought. In my head, I'm like, why apply? I'm worried here. You already know what <laughs> I can do. Just give me the job. Exactly. <laughs> but I was like, listen, white people do things differently. Let yeah. me do things differently. So I applied and I did the interview. But then there's a, that year I was doing, uh, there was a lady that did her teaching practice in my class. Okay. Under me. Mm -hmm. Under you. Okay. She's the one that got the job. Yeah. And she wasn't, no, she wasn't black. Okay. You know, so I was upset. I was really upset. So then they told me that you just need a little bit more experience and stuff like that. I was like, fair enough. Fair. I was upset, but I was like, fair enough. Okay. I really loved the school I stayed on. So I said, okay, at least at the very least, increase my salary because on the salary you're giving me, I can I still have to live off my parents because mm -hmm. my mom would send us rent. Mm -hmm. You know, even while we were working. Yeah. Because the money they'd give us was peanuts. It would only be good enough for us to live in the townships in South Africa, obviously. We're not going to live in the township. So in order for us to live in the good neighborhoods, uh -huh. uh, and good neighbors, not just 
any neighborhood, a good safe neighborhood, we'd have to my my mom would send us money still okay. on top of our on top of my salary. Yeah. So I told them this. I was like, I really want to get independent. My my mom my parents have, you know, their own obligations. We still have a younger brother who's in school and stuff. I'd love and I'm the oldest. I'd love to be able to be independent. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, they slapped me another thousand. Okay. Um, they slapped another thousand onto my salary. Mm -hmm. But then after a couple of weeks, I started talking. I realized, talking to my co-workers, and then I realized the other lady that was an assistant had the exact same qualifications I did. She was a qualified teacher, but she had been in that school since it, it started a f very many, like 15 years ago. This is a black was, lady. Yes. yes. And she was still an assistant. I was like, not me, Nan No. And you said what she was me? even older than your mom. She was older than, yeah, she was older than my mom. I was like, me. And I stay here as an assistant. <laughs> For the next 30 For years. For the next 30 years. <laughs> no, not to me. Miss me. So I resigned. <laughs> I was like, they need me at home. They mm. need these services at home. So I resigned and came home. <laughs> okay, okay. And you came home with your sister same time as well? No, she came she home stayed on? A, la a year later. She, okay. she stayed on. Uh -huh. she stayed so there. coming back home, was that a little scary for you? Shocking. Yeah. It was shocking. It was very, very shocking. It made a lot of mistakes that no one warns you about. I got a job, a really nice job. And I left it after a couple of months. I left it after a couple of months for someone else who added me 500,000. And then made me suffer. <laughs> so there's so many lessons I learned that mm -hmm. no one ever prepared me for. Yeah. That it's just the shock of adulthood. Mm -hmm. you, it takes a couple of years. And then I got married. Yeah. yeah. Because I also, like, where's the husband? Exactly, where's the man? Where exactly, is he? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So any guy that would smile at me. <laughs> any oh, <laughs> no. I was so young. <laughs> any guy that would, would mm -hmm. smile at me, I would want... I would be like, I would be imagining a spring wedding, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'd be put, attaching my name to his last name. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you've, you've been very open about the fact that, you know, that just didn't work. You weren't suited. No. Because I think sometimes people want to demonize one person or the other. Sometimes women, we do that a lot. He was so terrible. He was yeah. so terrible. But sometimes it just doesn't work out because you are not suited. suited. And that, that's what happened. Yeah, we were just okay. not suited for each other. You, you know, you mentioned confidence, right? And uh, many women do actually have to dim their light for their partners. Yeah. Sometimes not even the partners who make it happen. It's, it's the society. families, it's society. Yeah. It's like, you must walk behind, you must... Hakana, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just the whole... Women, uh, when you get married, especially when you make, get married young, yeah. it's different when you're older. Mm -hmm. It's different. You know who you are. You, you know, you're probably going to choose someone who fits into who you are. But when you're 23, what do you know about life? Yeah. 23, 24, what do you know about life? You know, there's no way you can make that decision. So when people say, ah, when the man comes back, you do ABC and do you do. <laughs> Then when this hand this happens, you do respect. You do, mm -hmm. you know, and they say all sorts of things that that make you dim. You yeah. know, how can you be wearing that? You're married. How can you do that? You're married. How can you A B C D? Mm -hmm. The men, no one tells them, but for you, you're married. Yeah, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> True. You know, so it's it just became. Uh, although, like, I don't regret it. I yeah. really don't regret well, it. Was a chapter in your life? Yeah, mm -hmm. it really, really was. Okay. It was. It, I traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, in my 20s so it's just something I, I look back and the decision to leave which is as you well know for yeah. many women is something they struggle yeah with. was that hard or difficult for you no it wasn't hard it wasn't difficult you had a conversation and how did that work or you're like okay I'm out we woke up one day and it was just time okay it's, it's so interesting it just happened so quickly Mm -hmm. so quickly you know you just wake up and you be like what the hell am I doing mm -hmm. do you get what I mean yeah and the separation just happens and you end up we didn't even have a we had a very quick divorce very quick no contest nothing it was a very quick very right now if I'm when I bump into him I say hello mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah it's some um, you know it's just one of those things Okay. It was, I was blessed. I didn't have any ties in terms of children. Um, I was blessed, not mm -hmm. for lack of trying. And so there was no real drama? There was no drama. Okay. There was no drama. Oh, there was no, even nice. the people who tried to, to try the drama, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, don't try me. <laughs> 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 I 
I'm one of those people, kindly don't try me. <laughs> and at that point, I think you were also reclaiming who you were. Yes. The decision to, like, this is not working, you're reclaiming who you were. Yeah. Okay. So I want to hear about the businesses. Okay. Your there first been, business. Very many. There's was been it? Very many. It was, was a preschool in my mom's house. Okay, that was the first one. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Baganda say, when someone is chasing you, they show you the way. You will find a way out <laughs> when people are, are chasing you. <laughs> So at that time, I went home and I told both my parents, my dad was still alive at that time, and I told my parents, can we start a preschool here? Okay. And they were like, how will it work? Uh, we were, my sister, and my sister had come back at that time, and we were like, we'll just use your living room and sitting room. Mm -hmm. My brother had moved out of his room because he was in uni now, so we put the living room and sitting room in his room, mm -hmm. and we created a preschool in there. My parents are that supportive. Oh. They, oh my God, you guys. When I say supportive parents, they literally, and their house is already not big, you know, so, but, ah, those, those people, those two, my parents. Um, so they made space for us for two years. Mm -hmm. Two years we were there. Okay. Um, and they would support us. Uh, my mom bought us a car that we could pick, pick kids from because our house is a little bit far in the, it, you know, in, in those ends. It's not for school. <laughs> It's for, mm -hmm. it's for home, yeah. <laughs> you know, so the parents would have a tr trouble. It's like a kilometer off the main road. Wow. So parents would have trouble. If you're going in the morning, you need an extra 20 minutes. Okay. You know, so we're like, no, no, we'll pick them. Mm -hmm. So we, our parents bought us a car and we were able to fetch, uh, fetch the kids and chauffeur them, pick them up at eight, bring them to school, take them home at one. Uh, it was just, yeah, it was a, when I think back, they didn't have to. Yeah. They really didn't have to. Uh, when I tell you I'm allergic to suffering, it is my parents' fault. <laughs> they also saw the suffering their children, were, their children were going through, and they were like, no, employers are not good in this Uganda. <laughs> Let us create a school for them. <laughs> so that was like about two years? About two years, yes. And then um, uh, I moved to the Seychelles. Okay. Um, after mo when I moved, I just sold everything. I had no money. Mm-hmm. I had no money. The school was giving us money. It was only 15 kids at the school, so mm -hmm. it was enough for us to live off and ah. buy fuel and, you know, just we had no bills. We were living at home. Mm -hmm. um, so it was enough for us to live off. But I got, I got itchy. Mm -hmm. I got an itch to move. Yeah. So I moved to Seychelles. I sold my car and moved to Seychelles with the money. Did you have a job waiting for you on the other hand? No, end? I had no clue what was there. <laughs> How I told you, I'm that, those people, when I have an itch, did I will do it. A movie? <laughs> did you read a book? I mean, <laughs> uh, did you have friends there? No, nothing. Nothing. I did not know a thing. A, a single person. I just knew the name of the... So what I was doing is I needed to move somewhere. Okay. I needed to get out of Uganda. Okay. I just needed felt like to I leave. was stifled. Yes. Yeah. I needed to leave. Obviously, my parents are not good for that. Mm -hmm. You know, as an adult, of I was course. even married. So, and I was just like, I need to go somewhere. And Uganda passport uh, holders, we are not welcome in very many countries. <laughs> so I had to find something that mm -hmm. somewhere that was passport, was friendly for my yes, passport. So I, don't, visa. I mm -hmm. didn't have money for even benching for visas. <laughs> <laughs> so when I had calculated it, if I sell my car, I sell my TV, I sell my couch, because I had moved out, obviously. Yes. If I sell all those things, I have enough money to at least give me money for the first three months in, the, in, in, in a country. So it had to be a country where the, 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 the currency is, yeah, is that a little bit? I, I am listening <laughs> to you. I am listening to the logic. So this is I am freaking <laughs> out internally, but I am listening yeah. to you. My dad told me once, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to go. That's what I want to do. So we get there. Um, we know no one, yeah. Um, a f uh, someone here that we knew, knew people there, mm. had been there for a, ye for a year, I think. Okay. And so he knew people there. So he got us in touch with those people. So to we go to a place, yeah? <laughs> if I describe it, the, the, the family were fishermen. They had a lot of fish in their house. Ah. Lovely welcome. Eh? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh my God! Already the the humidity, the but I'm a I'm a hustler. One of those people. I'm not a hustler. I got a job within a month of I called every preschool. I could I called. Fortunately, they still had I uh, had um, uh, phone books in Seychelles, mm -hmm. so I got every single preschool, 
until I found someone that was looking for, in fact, it was a Montessori school. Okay. It, was, it was a really great experience. But and I just learned that I'm not, I'm not born for islands. Mm. I need to be in a city. Okay. Somewhere was vibrant. Too quiet, too was slow. Too slow. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Island life. Island life. Yes. Was There's so something about slow. the water. I don't know what yes. it is. <laughs> that really <laughs> makes people. It was so slow that the cinema would open maybe on Saturdays only. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> like you'd go to the cinema and it might be closed. Yeah. Um, you know, it was so expensive to live. It's yeah. so, so expensive. We were making local salaries so we couldn't afford. Um, uh, we could afford the base, like to rent uh, like a studio apartment. Yeah, but something I, tiny. Yeah, but it was just too tiny. It was yeah. a great experience. Don't get me wrong. It was mm -hmm. a great experience. But it taught me that I, I, cannot, I cannot live in a remote space. Okay. I need to be in a big city. So, back home? No. Europe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Europe, Europe. So uh -huh. that's how I ended up in Europe. I lived in Ireland for almost four years. Ireland? Yeah. How was Beautiful that? place. Beautiful place. Lovely people. Mm -hmm. Lovely people. Um, it was such an amazing, other than the cold, mm -hmm. I loved Ireland. Okay. I really, really did. Oh, I grew wow. up in Ireland. Mm -hmm. I grew up because when the white man pays you, my dear, you work. Mm -hmm. So this schedule that we had of <laughs> Uganda, <laughs> you guys. I, my first job was, uh, I started a business there. Okay. <laughs> I have a lot of stories. Mm. So I was the first person in, uh, in Cork City to ha and the second person in the whole of Ireland to have a flower wall rental business. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And that is something I'm so proud of because I kept thinking, me and be from Kavumba in Uganda. I'm the first person to have, in Cork City, Cork is the second biggest uh, city in, in Ireland. Um, and I was the first person. I just couldn't. And when I saw it, I couldn't afford it at that time on one salary. Mm -hmm. And it was a meager salary. It wasn't like it was a basic salary. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was making so much money at that time. Um, so I had to find a way. But I'm good at finding solutions to my own problems. Mm -hmm. That's what, one thing I have really been good at. So I, I needed to make a flower wall. I needed to start a business. But I did not have a flower wall. So if I don't have a flower, and my house was tiny, it was tiny old Irish cottage, mm -hmm. little. And it's not like Uganda where you just hire a car to put the big flower wall and we drive. So there was a lot of problems there that I needed to fix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> first of all, let's deal with how do I get my first flower wall? Yeah. I didn't have money. I, I had seen, I had tried to look for as cheap as possible how to make it at home as cheap as possible. Flowers are expensive. Four flowers are why expensive. They're not as expensive now. They were stupid expensive then. Yes. I found a company in the UK. Fortunately, UK trade between UK and Ireland, no taxes. Mm -hmm. They just delivered to my door. Fair enough. Okay. That's fine. So I needed 500 euros that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. So I started advertising peop other people's flower walls as okay. inspo. Ah. Available in, in Cork. You know, no one was no one was taking because it was just in sport. People want to see the real thing, what they'll get for their wedding. Now, this is around March to coming toward wedding season, which starts in around April, May, mm -hmm. spring, yes, to, yes, spring to and summer. summer. So I needed to figure out how to get this flower wall. So what I did, I, I contacted a wedding, a wedding uh, magazine. Okay. And I told them for your next photo shoot, I want to uh, provide you a flower wall. I sent them. I sent them pictures of what it will look like. I will custom make it, I told them. Tell me your theme, I will have it, and stuff like that. And they needed a prop, mm -hmm. fortunately. Okay. They, needed a pr they needed props for, they were in Dublin. Second, second problem, I mean, Cork, they're in Dublin. The wall has to be built up four feet, uh, eight feet high. So I have a problem there, because how am I going to transport it without having to pay a thousand euros for a truck to take it to Dublin, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I I tried beat my head beat my head behind, and then I realized I could do panels. I could do it in panels that can fit in the car, and then assemble. And then assemble when we get there. Okay. But remember, I am not hands. I am not a handsman. I do not know carpentry <laughs> or nothing. <laughs> I went to Woody's. It's a it's a it's a where it's a those those um. The place where you get wood and things, building mm -hmm. equipment. So I went to Woody's. I got um, two, four panels. 
four by four panels. Mm -hmm. I had the flowers already. So I put the flowers, it took me, it would take me about five days to put all flowers, there were like thousands of flowers mm. all together. Beautiful when I put it down on the floor, but how's it going to stand now? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you know, okay, now the problem is that, that you <laughs> relish the challenge. I love a good challenge. What you're saying, many people just say, ah, not for me. I love I a good challenge. Do you know how good I feel about myself when I figure things out uh -huh. that other people would normally just be like, uh-uh. <laughs> I got the things that, no, the, the day before the first, um, that we were going to Dublin, I was like, thank you, how's this good thing going to stand? You still hadn't figured it out? I hadn't figured it out. So I had figured it out in my head, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I moved everything to, or toward the wall, and I put my, I put it together. It looked beautiful on the wall. I was like, now, okay, now let's flip it over and fix, figure it out. I had bought, an, I had got bolts. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll bolt it together. I was like, but they are four. So when I tried it, that wasn't going to work. Yeah. Yeah. But I had gone to the shop late. So now the next day was that when we were supposed to travel. In the morning, the people who were opening found me at that door. I needed to make another plan. I did make another plan. Okay. And it worked. Uh, but if we only tried it out at the venue, I, w I really did gamble. I really, really did gamble. So <laughs> Miss Fix it as well, I right? really am. I really, if you have a problem, by the way, come to me. My dad was like that mm -hmm. as well. My dad was like that. I miss him so much because he used to fix my problems. Mm. Like, there's nothing my dad didn't know. Anyway, so yeah, this happens. And I, and... So I, I did that, and then it got into the magazine, mm -hmm. and the magazine put it on the socials, and I started to get calls ah. about the flower wall. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I did is now I made, I got a bed sheet this time. Okay. Yeah? And I put the, the, the fl this flower, so I made a pink one, mm -hmm. a pink flower wall for that first gig. But then I got a bed sheet and put f white flower walls. So when someone needs a white flower wall, I would put the white bed sheet <laughs> over the pink, <laughs> over the pink flowers. And I, I mean, I, it just worked. So mm -hmm. now any color, I just put on a big sheet. I had one <laughs> wall. <laughs> I had no space in my house. Um, and that's how so I did that for two years. And mm -hmm. it got big, a big, big, big influencer, cork influencer, mm -hmm. um, found me online by an ad. And she wanted me to do her, wait, her baby shower, her first baby shower. And she came to me, I had no idea what content creation was at that time. I had no idea what influencering was, was at that time. Nothing. I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. That is when I found out the power of content creation and influencing. Yeah. Uh, so she came to me and she's like, listen, I can pay for the wall. I was charging 700 euros per wall. Uh, five to 700, depending on the wall and mm -hmm. depending on the season. Yeah. So I was like, I can pay you, but if I pay you, I will not shout you out. But if I shout you out, she gave me a whole lesson. She was kind enough to give me a lesson on influencing. Yes. And I was like, oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I was booked sense. out for two years. I never paid for an, an ad again. Oh, wow. Booked out for two years. I Do had you never know how so many people will not see that opportunity? They will not. Mm -hmm. Most people were going to be like, no, you have to pay. Yeah. But if someone that people know and trust shouts your business out you know how much marketing that is. yeah i got booked out for two years oh my god yeah and then after, after like a year i got bored <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was always on the road on the weekend yeah. because then i had to get a job at some point mm -hmm. because the money was coming in yes but it was needed yeah you know europe you know yeah. expensive yes it is um so then we travel all over so we you're working all over with a job monday to friday and then, and then weekends yes off. exactly exhausting. so it was exhausting so i got tired of it mm. and it wasn't really where my heart was in the beginning it was, I was excited because it was a challenge i love a good challenge mm. but then it stops to be a challenge and i get bored that's me okay um so i i finished all the weddings i was supposed to uh after two years i left it okay. I, 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 yeah, I, I d it was a really good business, though. It was a really good business. So what are your businesses now? Now I have my preschool, Blue Moon International School in Muyenga. It's an international school. We use an international curriculum. Mm -hmm. And the reason I started it was because of my dyslexia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I'm dyslexic, I found learning a challenge when I was growing up. So I wanted to create an inclusive school mm -hmm. that helps, that is for all children, regardless yeah. of your abilities or disabilities yeah. you know um and yeah it's been a beautiful journey mm -hmm. it really has covid hit us back yeah we're still recovering but generally speaking it has been a really really good journey my other business then i started uh, right before covid started mm -hmm. fortunately i started with as well i started be your own boss babe mm -hmm. but that's because as well I've, I've been for 
the longest time I've been helping people with their business challenges, mm -hmm. mostly because of my my ability to solve problems. Okay. I see a problem and so I help the you business solve it. coaching. Yeah. Yes. So you're like a consultancy essentially, kind of. Would you I say? I wouldn't say consultancy. Okay. I just advise. I create content. Okay, which I create content. It's okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I create I started out I didn't start it out as a business. I started it out as something I c as a passion. Mm. Just to help people who didn't have cuz I didn't have anyone telling me yeah. do a b c and d. I felt my dad was too old. I should have asked him really because he was a businessman as well, but I felt like he was too old. So I did everything myself, but I shouldn't have. Mm. There's so many mistakes I made. Yeah. Grave mistakes, mistakes that I shouldn't if someone had told me. So that's what I started via on Boss Babe for. Okay. And it just started to grow. And it, I think also because of my personality and how, you know, I just pitted out the ballpark with the things I said. Everyone's like, who's this chick? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what really, um, uh, so I, 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 that's how I, I started telling people that you're not doing the business right, do it this way and stuff. Mm. And then I started, I discovered digital products. Uh -huh. So I started to sell digital products um, uh, to help people. So when you say consultancy, I do not sit, I very rarely sit, I do sometimes, but I very rarely sit with you, Crystal, and mm -hmm. say, do your business like this and like this. Okay. You know, because that's not what most people need. Mm -hmm. Most people need tools to help them get to from point A to point B. Yes. You mm -hmm. get, so if I'm telling you now what's your ROI, return of investment, mm -hmm. all those are big words <laughs> that when you're starting out in business, no, even now, yes. after 12, 11 years in business, I still, I just still don't think of business in a ROI kind mm -hmm. of way. You know, I think of what is your ni uniqueness, what is your superpower, you know, breaking it, these big breaking words it down, down into, easy understand. into understandable. Mm -hmm. Again, because I'm dyslexic, return on investment means what? Yeah. yeah. So I'm uh, because I was able to do that for myself. I wanted to help other people make make it easier for other people. Mm -hmm. Why are you selling before you know how to market? Yeah. Why aren't you marketing? You know, you, this is how you market. You market for three years. So I would create digital tools that would literally help you get from the point you are mm -hmm. to the next point, to the next point in order for you to make eventually make an, a sale. Yeah. You know, um, how to use. Instagram, it's four years now. Mm -hmm. You know, I am more of a, I'd like to say I'm a pro yeah. expert. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I learned communication, breaking things down and stuff like that. And then I started, be, I started the unpopular, unpopular opinion. opinion. Yes. Which is also a, a dream. Yeah. I am, yeah, I'm a, a dream. It's just talking to women, talking to younger women. Even women our age that are going through things, that it's okay, we, mm -hmm. we've been there. We don't know what's coming ahead, but we know what we're going through now and we know what we are, we have been through. So and you those don't uncomfortable have to feel conversations, alone. which are the most important that need to be had. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And we felt when Prim Fiona and I sat down to talk about it's because we have this conversation in our sitting rooms all the time mm -hmm. when we meet. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, but we never see any of this. And we never hear anyone saying it's okay when i first told people i was divorced oh my god the internet went mad <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and i said it so casually by the way like it's a by the way and i feared it so long for so long mm. until i just a lot of power it. exactly for so, long. for so long and when i said it out there i released it it's yeah. okay judge me if you want it's that's up to you your feelings about my situation you know, is up to you. Mm -hmm. So once I took that power back, then I realized so many people need someone to encourage them yeah. to do these things. Especially us women, we've been stifled and just choked. And also, it's just a reminder, your journey is not my journey. Exactly. Everyone's template is different. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it does, you don't have to, yeah. <laughs> I know someone who keeps saying, I have even four marriages in me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not here to suffer. <laughs> now, I, won't say, also, I will never say that. Not the, the <laughs> Bend and all, and all please. <laughs> Let's just say that. Because, exactly. I mean, I guess it's part of the way most women are raised. Mm. Like what you're saying. You came back from South Africa. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Where is he? Where is he? So for many women, it's that thing, like, without it. Exactly. You, exactly. you know, you failed exactly. in some way. And if you fail at it, which is not the thing. If yeah. it didn't work, it didn't work. Mm. It doesn't mean you failed, yeah. right? And people actually say that I'm, 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 I share too much. I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. Trust me. If there's something I don't want people to know, you will never even breathe it. But you're being true to your personality. Exactly. And that is the most powerful, powerful thing. thing. There you go. Aww. That's the most powerful thing. I think I found when I came into that realization that I'm not, I am 
I go loudly, mm -hmm. very loudly. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing something, I want to tell the whole world I'm doing it. And I realize that it's, it's um, even before I fail, and I fail publicly, I'm happy failing publicly. You know, because I know other people are learning. If mm -hmm. I had that, that, that someone to, I can see, okay, she's fallen today and she has gotten up and she's still going on. Mm -hmm. I would never have rushed through so many things thinking I'm a failure. You know, because this is just normal life, and that's okay, why that I is share. so much courage, though. <laughs> it is. My <laughs> goodness, I fail. I feel I mean, even some of the, the most successful people in the world. They're always telling you what they did to be successful, but yeah. you're, like, you're not really telling us. No, that no one ever tells. Really, really tells you. Mm. I've admit that there's some things I, the trade secrets I keep to myself. Mm. Yeah. But generally speaking, I say 90% of yeah. it. I say 90% of it. Those were small, most important. Someone is, going, someone is going to tell you ROI and these big words and mm. whatnot. But yet it comes down to what is your superpower, mm -hmm. Crystal? How can you monetize your superpower? Yeah. You get. Why? You want to start a clothing brand. Why? What is the problem you are solving in the clothing industry? Mm, exactly. Don't just be buying dresses and selling them. <laughs> no one's going to buy them. <laughs> You get, are you just going coming to feel the minimalistic fashion sense? Are you bringing street fashion? Are you bringing for big people? You know, I, mm. I, the, my fifth business, I was getting into that. Yes. Um, my fifth business is um, that I'm starting just now. I, if you want to know, I'm, I'm posting every day of the journey. Now, if I fail, I fail. Okay. It's okay. Uh -huh. I don't mind. Um, but I, I'm hoping that I, other people who want to start businesses can see the little step to by step every day I do one thing and I show it I do one thing and I show it I'm not in a hurry no one is chasing me it's not like I need the money <laughs> you know I do but you know it's not like mm -hmm. I'm dying without it yes. um, so I just really want to show the experience the things you need to be thinking about when you start a business mm. not so I didn't just start a business I'm a big woman mm -hmm. very curvy mm -hmm. really well you know blessed and gifted <laughs> <laughs> I find it really difficult to find clothes. Clothes that look good on me that are not old fashioned. Thank you. You have such great style. Thank you. But that means Thank a you. lot of effort. It, a right? lot of effort. A mm -hmm. lot of shipping, which means taxes on yeah. top of taxes. Mm -hmm. A lot of, I have to, you know, and I hate, I hate physically going to shops myself. Ah. So there's a lot of bring, send, does not fit. It, does it, it fits in the waist, doesn't fit in the way, hips, exactly. things like that. So I decided I'm going to just buy the clothes. If it fits me, I sell it on that shop oh. for other people. Because people keep saying, Claire, how do you dress? How do you, how do you? So I was like, okay, if you like the stop, it's here. Mm -hmm. If you like the stop, it's here. So, you know, it's a business that now, also my, because I'm an influencer now. Yes. A lot of people want to wear what yes. I wear, yes. you know. And it's nothing conceited about saying it. It's the, just the truth. That's a what lot influencing of is about, Exactly. Though. A lot of people message me about my clothes. Where do you get this? Where do you get that? I plug a lot of people. Why am I selling other people's things? Thank you. That is an opportunity. <laughs> sitting there right you go. There, right? <laughs> I don't want to be an influencer forever. Mm -hmm. I want my platform to do something for me. Mm. That's what I want. And that's what I, I think a lot of content creators get wrong. That your end all and be all. Me, my, this is just the where, you know. Then you're directed to wherever. If it's your di your mm -hmm. parent, you're directed to the school. If you're a parent, it's a personal brand that yeah. redirects wherever people c need to go. Yeah. So if I decided tomorrow to be a doctor, yeah, people are going to go to my clinic. Or if I decided, so that's what I use my personal brand mm -hmm. for. Because now, how can I sell for you things when I can't sell for myself? True. You know, and uh, so I, did, I decided I'm not going to live off my influencing. I'm just going to use, build a personal brand to feed, to feed off the other things. So mm -hmm. tomorrow if I'm, I'm building a hotel, I will not need to pay Crystal. Mm -hmm. I will not need to pay anyone else. I have my own. You already brand. have the platform. There you to go. Showcase exactly. It. Mm -hmm. So that's what this this the beauty. And you know, people say personal brand, personal brand, it's a buzzword. <laughs> it really is a buzzword. I mm -hmm. didn't understand personal brand. I didn't even realize I was building one until this year. Mm -hmm. Yet when I realized it, I've built a personal brand without even knowing. I it. know. <laughs> that's yeah. what happened. Exactly. <laughs> and then I realized, okay, now I need to figure out how to teach building a personal brand mm -hmm. to people who are where I was four years ago without realizing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's I know that we need to wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish we had more time. I know I wish we had more time. Um, I've been listening to your journey and like you said, it, it sounds like you're fearless. But we also know that you said that there have also been moments where you like you question yourself and everything. Yeah. What has been the biggest challenge? Especially as someone what you said that oh you know some people say I share too much. 
your putting yourself out there on social media what for you has been the biggest challenge the fear mm. i do fear i'm not fearless i just feel the fear and do it anyway fear <laughs> does not control me i control it and it's it's been land it's a land thing mm. um my biggest challenge by the way before i post something i think twice um. i think should i post it there's so many unposted pieces of content. I think we all go through that. But I think also in, in my husband, so at some point it's blood the line between what I share and what I don't. Oh. Not in terms of he, he had no issue with me sharing about him or about our marriage and stuff. It's just that when we go out, people know him. Oh, I feel him! <laughs> <laughs> you know, and people would hug him and he's not oh. that kind. He's not like me. He's okay. not like me, so, so he'd be like, kind of protect exactly, him, but exactly. also still be authentic. Exactly. Mm -hmm. how, to, how do I protect him? Mm. How do I come on here and talk nicely about marriage when my marriage is not where, go, doing well? Because it had, there have been times when it hasn't. Yeah, which is You how. get what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, how do I, and those, the, those, ha, are they still together? She's no longer posting him. So I, <laughs> I made a decision. <laughs> those things, you know, you, you do worry about it. You do yeah. sometimes worry about her. I haven't posted it in a few days, but I put him there and things like that. So you don't know how to be authentic and still have a real private life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's difficult for me to come and say good, you know, something good when I'm not feeling good. So I've just decided I will be as authentic mm -hmm. as I possibly can. There's a time earlier this year I was just going through a depression. Yeah. And I shared, every morning I'd be like, guys, because today I am not that I'm so capable of babe. I am just dying in my bed right now. Um, and people I think have felt seen mm -hmm. and felt hurt. Actually, I, a lot of people said I felt, they felt relatable. Like people mm. relate only to pain. Eh? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> Um, but that no, has been challenging. The thing, it's the thing that we hide. Yeah. It's the thing that we're too exactly, afraid to show. Exactly. Mm. I, I realize that my vulnerability and my, uh, is my strength. That's what I realized. Um, and every, no, everyone fears vulnerability. Yes. But I realize mine, and as much as I, sh I can, I show. But also it's a choice. It's a choice exactly. for mm. You can't. We're human. No, because we're we human. evolve naturally. Yes. That's another challenge I face. Uh, people thinking that you should be, you should have the same opinions over and over and year in, year out. I'm like, no, I'm But human. then we're not learning yeah. and growing uh, yeah. if we do not adjust accordingly. Exactly, right? exactly. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for oh, having me, Crystal. My gosh, I hope we can chat again. I know, I know. Just, she's mine. We will after mine. this. We will after this. <laughs> yeah. We will after but thank this. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for and having me. I'm excited me. to see all the big things that are still waiting for you. They are going, they're there. <laughs> thank there, you, thank so you, <laughs> thank you, thank no. you, Crystal. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. I love talking, so <laughs> thank you for giving me a platform to talk, <laughs> <laughs> as if I don't have enough. <laughs> no, this is, this was so amazing. Thank, thank you. you.